All right, now remember, introduce me as Cousin Barney. I'm counting on you lot to camouflage me if anything happens. Oh, come off it, Harry. We've got this all under control. When I get married, I won't be bothering with any of this nonsense. You can all wear what you like, and I'll put a full body bind curse on Mum until it's all over. She wasn't too bad this morning, considering... Cried a bit about Percy not being here, but who wants him? Oh, blimey. Brace yourselves. Here they come. Look. Oh, excellent. I think I see a few Vila cousins. They'll need help understanding our English customs. I'll look after them. It's not so fast, your holiness. I better go see dad's colleagues. See you around, Harry. My daughter and I live just over the hill. So kind of the good Weasleys to invite us. But I think you know my Luna. Yes, isn't she with you? She lingered in the charming little garden to say hello to the gnomes and such glorious infestation. <laughs> Ours do know a lot of excellent swear words. Oh, hi, Aunt Muriel. Oh no, for a moment I thought you were Ginevra. Merlin's beard, what is Xenophilius Lovegood wearing? He looks like an omelette. Who are you? Oh, this is our cousin, Barney. Another Weasley. You breed like gnomes. Isn't Harry Potter here? I was hoping to meet him. I thought he was a friend of yours, Ronald, or have you merely been boasting? No, he couldn't come. <laughs> Made an excuse, did he? It's not as gormous as he looks in press photographs then. I've just been instructing the bride on how best to wear my tiara. Well been made, you know. It's been in my family for centuries. She's a good looking girl, but still. Well, well, find a good seat, Ronald. I'm 107 and not to be on my feet too long. I'm do that on a little bit again. Just in case. <clears throat> Made an excuse, did he? Not as gormous as he looks in press photographs then. I've just been instructing the bride on how best to wear my tiara. Problem made, you know. It's been in my family for centuries. She's a good looking girl, but still French. Well, well, find me a good seat, Ronald. I'm 107 now, not to be on my feet too long. Nightmare Muriel is. She used to come for Christmas every year, then, thank God, she took offense because Fred and George set off a dung bomb under her chair at dinner. Dad always says she'll have written them out of her will. Like they care, they're going to end up richer than anyone else in the family. It's all right, they're going. Wow. You look great. Always your tongue is surprised, Ronald. Your great aunt Muriel doesn't agree. I just met her upstairs while she was giving Flora a tiara. She said, oh dear, it's just the muckleborn. And then bad posture, skinny ankles. Don't take it personally. She's rude to everyone. Talking about Muriel. Yeah, she just told me my ears are lopsided. Old bat. I wish Uncle Billius was still with us, though. He was a right laugh at weddings. Wasn't he the one who saw the Grimm and died 24 hours later? Yeah, he went a bit odd toward the end. But before he went loopy, he was the life and soul of the party. He used to down an entire bottle of fire whiskey, then run onto the dance floor, hoist up his robes, and start pulling bunches of flowers out of his... Yes, he's a real charmer. Never married for some reason. You amaze me. <laughs> you look wonderful. Victor! Yee! I didn't know you were. My goodness, it's lovely to see. How are you? How come you're here? 
Did you see he's grown a stupid little beard? We are gathered here today to celebrate the union of two faithful souls. Do you, William Arthur, take Floor Isabel? Then I now declare you bonded for life. Ladies and gentlemen, if you would please stand up. Smooth. We should go and congratulate them. We have time for that later. We should grab a table. Not there. Nowhere near Muriel. Who's that man in the yellow? That's Xenophilus Lovegood. Dad of a friend of ours. Hermione. Dance with me? <sighs> uh, they are together now? Sort of, I suppose. Where are you? Barney Weasley. You, Barney. You know this Lovegood man well? I've only met him today. Why? If he was not the guest of Flurs, I would go and kill him now for wearing that filthy sign upon his chest. Sign? How come? What's wrong with it? Grindelwald. It's Grindelwald's sign. Grindelwald? You mean the dark wizard Dumbledore defeated? Yes, the very same. Grindelwald killed many people. My grandfather, for instance. But of course, he was never powerful in this country. They said he killed Dumbledore and Wrangley, seeing how he was finished. But this, this is his symbol. I recognized it at once. He carved it onto the wall, don't say, when he was a pupil there. Some idiots copied it onto those things, thinking to shock or be impressive. Until those of us who lost family members to the new world taught them better. Are you, um, quite sure that it's Grindelwald's? I'm not mistaken by you. I walked past that symbol for several years. I know it well. Well, there is a chance that Xenophilus doesn't know what it means. The love goods are quite unusual. He could easily have picked it up somewhere and think it's a cross section of the head of a crumple horn snorkak or something. A cross section of what? Well, I don't know what they are, but. Apparently, he and his daughter go on holiday looking for them. Oh, that's her over there. Luna Lovegloop. Why is she doing that? Probably trying to get rid of a rock or something. What about Gregorovich? He's a wand maker. I know that. He made your wand. That's why I thought... I hadn't realized I hadn't discussed my wand with friends. <laughs> uh, I read it somewhere, I think, in a, in a fan magazine. You know the type. He retired several years ago. I was one of the last to purposely go where he found it. They are the best. Although I know, of course, you've written this set much story by our band. This girl is very nice looking. She is also a relative of yours. This girl is very nice looking. She is also a relative of yours. Hello, Muriel. We were just discussing. Discussing. You there, give me your charm, 107. 
hello again, Barry, or whatever your name is. Did you know that Rita Skeet has written a biography about Dumbledore? I can't wait to read it. I must remember to place an order at Flourish and Blots. <clears throat> There's no need to look like a bunch of stuffed frogs. Before I became so respected and respectable and all that tosh, there were some mighty funny rumours about Albus. Still informed snipping. You would say that, Alpheus. I noticed how you skated over the sticky patches in that obituary of yours. Dumbledore, I dare say you'll still think he was a saint, even if it does turn out he did away with his squib sister. I'm sure you think so, but I assure you I was writing from the heart. Muriel! His sister was a squib. I thought she was ill. <clears throat> thought wrong then, didn't you, Mary? Anyway, how could you expect to know anything about it? It all happened years and years before you even thought of, my dear. And the truth is that those of us who were alive then never knew it really happened. That's why I can't wait to find out what Skeeter's are next. Dumbledore kept that sister of his quiet for a long time. Untrue! Absolutely untrue! He never told me his sister was a squib. And why on earth would he tell you? The reason Albus Dumbledore never spoke about Ariana is he should have known. Her death completely devastated him. By her death. Why did nobody ever see her, Alpheus? Why did half of us never even know she existed until they carried the coffin out of the house and held a funeral for her? Where was saintly Albus while Ariana was locked in the cellar? Both being brilliant at Hogwarts and never mind. Terrifying woman, simply terrifying. Muggle-born, though, I heard she pretended otherwise. She never pretended anything of the sort. She was proud and very domineering, sort of which she would have been mortified to produce a squib. Ariana was not a squib. So you say, Alpheus. Explain then why she never attended Hogwarts. In our day, squibs were often hushed up. Thor would take it to the extreme of actually imprisoning a little girl in the house and pretending like she didn't exist. I tell you, that is not what happened. Squibs were usually shipped off to muggle schools and encouraged to integrate with the muggle community. Much kinder than trying to find a place in the wizarding world where they must always be second class. But naturally, Kendra Dumbledore wouldn't have dreamed of letting her daughter go to a muggle school. Ariana was delicate. Her health was always too poor to permit her. For your information, Alpheus, my cousin Lancelot was a healer at St. Mungo's at the time. And he told my family in the strictest confidence that Ariana had never been seen there. Almost suspicious, Lancelot thought. Now, if Kendra hadn't died first, I'd have said that it was she who finished off Ariana. How can you, Muriel? A mother? Kill her daughter? Think of what you're saying. If the mother in question was capable of imprisoning her daughter for years on end, why not? But as I say, it doesn't fit because Kendra died before Ariana. Of what? Nobody ever seemed sure. Oh, no doubt Ariana murdered her. Why not? Yes. Ariana might have made a desperate bid for freedom and killed Kendra in the struggle. Shake your head all you like, Alpheus. You were at Ariana's funeral, were you not? Yes, I was. In a more desperately sad occasions, I cannot remember. Albus was heartbroken, though. His heart wasn't the only thing. Didn't Albus break Albus's nose halfway through the service? How do you? My mother was friendly with all Bathilda Bagshot. The 
Dodo described the whole thing to Mother while I was listening at the door. A coffin side brawl. The way Bethilda told it, Aberforth shouted that it was all Alice's fault that Ariana was dead and then punched him in the face. According to Bethilda, Albus did not even defend himself. And that's odd enough in itself. Albus could have destroyed Aberforth in a duel with both hands tied behind his back. Now I'll tell you something else. I think Bethilda has spilled the beans to read to Skeeter. All those hints in Skeeter's interview about an important source close to the Dumbledores. Goodness knows she was there all through the Ariana business, and it would fit. I freaking looked again. Bethilda would never talk to Rita Skeeter. Bethilda Bagshot, the author of the History of Magic. Why gaga these days, I've heard. If that is so, it is more dishonorable for Skeeter to have taken advantage of her and no reliance can actually be placed in anything Matilda may have said. May have said? Oh, there are ways of bringing back memories. I'm sure Rita Skeeter knows them all. But even if Matilda is completely cuckoo, I'm sure she serves all photographs, maybe even letters. She knew the Dumbledore for years. Well worth a trip to Goldrick's Hollow, I'd have thought. <laughs> Bethilda Bagshot lives in Goldrick's Hollow? Oh yeah, she's been there forever. The Dumbledore's moved there after Percival was imprisoned and she was the neighbour. The Ministry has fallen. Scrimgore is dead. They are coming. 